I spoke, O Lord, of your decrees before kings, and was not confounded. I pondered your commands and loved them greatly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, today we celebrate the passion of the beheading of St. John the Baptist. And for us to celebrate this mystery in a sacred way, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died as martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass, against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Sponsorial song. I will sing your salvation. I will sing your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing your salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from my birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I sing your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias, his own daughter, came, came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guest. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, She heard of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guest, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with others to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. In the world of politics, it is said that in each case, someone is being used. And so if you look around and you see no one who is being used, then be cautious, you may be the one. But I dare say that when we talk of politics, we shouldn't often exaggerate our minds and thoughts to presidents, to ministers, to speakers, and big offices like that. We should also try to come down to talk of the politics in our homes, the politics in our offices, the politics in our workplaces, in our families, and the likes. In the case of the gospel, it was John the Baptist and an innocent girl who were used. And the gospel give us details of why and how they were used. They were used because in the case of John the Baptist, he had spoken truth to power. As a prophet, he stood for his office to speak the mind of God and do what the Lord wishes of him. In the case of the innocent girl, she acted out of innocence, just as many of us at times. But then we realize that in all these cases, the murder of John the Baptist was avoidable. If Herod had listened to his conscience, his right conscience. Because the gospel makes us aware 
that he was very much convinced of the righteousness of John the Baptist. And even when John the Baptist spoke, it pricked his mind and his conscience. But what he was lacking was the willpower to do what was right. And even when he tried to play along the gallery, to the gallery, something happened. When he had called for a devil with so many people around, and the daughter of Herodias had come to perform, he made a promise to do good to this girl. He, he least expected that the lady was going to ask of something unthinkable. That was the head of John the Baptist, the righteous man. The man who spoke truth to power and did what was right before the Lord. But when the lady had asked for this, John the Baptist had to be sacrificed. And Herod knew him to be innocent. But he had already made a promise. And so he asked for the head of John to be brought to him. Like I said, it was avoidable if he was humble enough to accept that he faulted, to accept that he couldn't sacrifice an innocent, innocent man for his pride. But just to accept the fact that he was human and the fact that he faulted and the fact that he couldn't sacrifice an innocent man for his pride, he committed that atrocity and killed John the Baptist. In the case of Herodias, she knew that Herod had nothing to lose if she let her go. But she was to lose greatly. So she had sworn heaven and earth to get what she desired. That was to be with Herod, even when it was very wrong to marry two brothers. She knew it, and she was convinced of that. But for her selfish needs and desires, she couldn't let him go. Through her, John the Baptist was killed. And through the pride of Herod, John the Baptist was killed. Like I said, in the world of politics, someone is being used. If you look around and you find no one, you may be the one. And if you are not the one, then probably you may be using someone. So again, do not exaggerate your minds, your hearts, and your thoughts to pick offices. Just look around you whether you are using someone or someone is being used in your case. If you are using someone, if I am using someone, the celebration we faced today encourages us that we are not supposed to be using others and dampen them. The use and damp culture that Pope Francis talks of each and every day. Man is not an instrument. Man is not to be used and damp. So we pray in this holy sacrifice that God will help us that even when we are faced with difficulties, we may stand for the truth as John the Baptist stood for the truth. For the Lord tells us in the first reading that we stand up and tell what he commands of us. That we will not be crushed on that account. 
as though he will not leave us to be crushed. So we pray again that we may avail ourselves for what the Lord expects of us as prophets in our offices, in our homes, and wherever we find ourselves. And that we may not be tempted to use others and dump them. In the case of Herod and Herodias, may God bless us. Joined by the prayers of the martyrs, we pray that the baptized may heed the prophetic voices speaking among them. For this, we pray that world leaders may accept the challenging words of the poor and forgotten. For this, we pray that those who practice injustice may turn to righteousness. For this, we pray that we may be ready witnesses to the gospel. For this, we pray. And that through the intercession of Our Lady, our Lord will spare us during this hurricane season from all harm and will protect us, our homes and our properties, from all, our, all disasters of nature. For this, we pray. Strengthen us, God of prophets, that we may have courage to speak the gospel's challenge. May your word spoken in us find welcome among the powerful, that all people may know justice, love, and truth. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine and work of human hands. It will become a spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. Let us pray. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your path, as taught by the voice crying in the desert, St. John the Baptist who passed his teaching by the shedding of his blood, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he lived for joy. At the coming of human salvation, he alone of all the prophets pointed out the lamb of redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the heavy, the very altar of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, as before your majesty, without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending now your spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sapa was sent there, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, so Mario, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, I will thy earth, and as we see in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we give the gift of God. Christ. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are away to the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere for what it signifies the saving sacrament we have received, and even more may rejoice as its clear effects in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. St. Michael the Archangel. Please join Father Sam and I for the prayer of our Mother Perpetual Help. Most Holy and Immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge and our hope. We come to you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother Perpetual Help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of Perpetual Health, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces. The strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ and the holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Mother of Perpetual Health, you continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's word, May the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put his word into practice in our daily lives. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed and the, might, the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Mother, perpetual help. With the greatest confidence, we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives. Everywhere we meet the cross, comfort to the afflicted. Beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our sufferings. Or if it be the will of God that we should suffer still longer, help us endure all with love and patience. May we all wait. we wish for example of your son, and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves to our care of our heavenly Father. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, as a, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Mario, our priest, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal rest to all of our deceased. 
and to the souls of all the faithful deported. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. We thank you, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. We thank you, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. We thank you, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pause now to silently thank our mother of perpetual help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, look upon your servants laboring under your heavenly weakness. Cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. As you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms, being mother ready at every moment to help us. For God who is mighty has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail out out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and the grace always to call upon you, mother of perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us, Grant, we beg you, that we who call on her, help on her help, may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask of you, live and reign forever. Amen. Amen. 